Hello, my sweet strangerlings. Welcome to Metaphysical Mystic Mondays. You know, last week I talked about what else could I do on these Mondays because I feel like this is like a grab a bag variety type of day. And today I wanted to talk about home invasions specifically because I went to the Strangers premiere and I see that the film is either out now or will be out by the time this episode is recorded. And so I will be touching base on the eerie home invasion. There's this one story that freaked me out that I read, but also talk about what I thought when I saw the film in 2008 versus the most recent one that came out this year or is coming out. And also paranormal phenomenon and home invasions. So we're going to get into a couple of things here and I'm so excited to talk about it. All right, so now in 2008, The Strangers came out and it definitely had mixed reviews. But one thing I will say is I found it incredibly scary. Why? Because I lived in a small town in Minnesota. Uh, definitely don't want to really be watching anything with home invasions when I'm a teenager who is home alone in the middle of the night while my mom is working about 45 minutes away. <laughs> and Minnesota is very woodsy. There's a lot of like remote areas out there including me living in a small town. The film is about after returning home from a wedding reception, a couple staying in an isolated vacation house receive a knock on the door in the mid hours of the night. What ensues is a violent invasion by three strangers, their faces hidden behind masks. The couple find themselves in a violent struggle in which they go beyond what either of them thought capable in order to survive. So this film got a 6.1 out of 10 star reviews. And I can see when it comes to horror films, I feel like it's always like a mixed bag of emotions. Any film really is. But I think with horror, they never get high ratings. I think because people either are not afraid of it and they expect to be afraid of it. But I think like unlike a lot of scary films, home invasions hits very close home to reality. I think the idea of watching any home invasion, to me in particular, it gets me in my feels. It is very scary. I think especially being a woman on top of that um, makes it even scarier because in the film, her um, her boyfriend or her, I don't even know if like, I, I can't remember anymore, but I'm just going to say her partner because I don't know what he is. Uh, he steps out to do some errands for her. And while he's gone, she starts to be taunted and terrorized. So I don't know about you guys, but I was freaked out by that. And I talk about some tea on this. Would, would that be okay with you if I could like mention some things before we get into what I thought of the 2024 film that just came out? So when I went there, I saw uh, the some of the Riverdale casts. But you know what's interesting? And maybe someone can like oh, I don't know, like add in more to this. So in the 2024 version, the leading cast is Madel Madeline Pesh and Gabriel Basso. I'm probably botching up their names. I'm so sorry, you guys. But um, I know that Madeline, she was in Riverdale. I didn't see this. I, I, I got there pretty late, if I'm being honest. Uh, but I did see photos of her with her two friends uh, from Riverdale. And from what I saw, the photos was of Lily Reinhardt and Camila Mendez. And so it was just interesting because then I saw Dylan Sprouse. So I didn't see Cole Sprouse, but I saw Dylan Sprouse. And I was like, oh, did Dylan Sprouse just like show up on behalf of his brother? Because you know how like Cole and Lily dated I don't know could be a weird thing just something I wanted to point out the tea for for the premiere but now let's get into the 2024 version of the strangers and what I thought ultimately now this is kind of a spoiler alert so if you haven't seen the film please do so but if you've also seen the 2008 film I will also be talking about that versus the 2024 version and how I felt ultimately. So the 2024 version felt so much like a remake in a sense that, you know, it's about a couple. They end up in a remote area. Now, there's a little bit more of a backstory, I want to say, with the 2024 version and the couple there. Um, you kind of get to see a little bit more of the personality types that they have there. And it's definitely felt like they're setting up the stage for like more of a backstory with these masked figures that are invading homes and killing people, right? 
in this uh, first segment, they end up driving. They're on a road trip somewhere, and they end up at a diner. And in the diner, you see in the back that there is, like, this missing guy. And so they go into how this guy very much fits a description of the current leading guy, um, Gabriel's character, Gregory in the film. And Gregory, so the, the guy that's missing, or they find the poster in the diner and they see that this guy's missing. They describe this personality type to be very similar to Gregory's character, uh, aka the current leading guy in the film. So already we have an idea that maybe, at least for me when I watch this, I'm like, oh, okay, so these like killers already have like a profile or like the type of people that they go after. And so anyway, the couple ends up having car issues. They stay in this remote area. All terror ensues. And so it's interesting to me because I know there's people that absolutely did not like the film. But for me personally, if you didn't like the 2008 version, you're probably not going to like the 2024 version. Because like I said, there's so many similarities. One, like they're in a remote area, small town, middle nowhere. But then like the... There are other similarities as well, like where the guy steps out to do errands, goes into town to get her something because there's nothing to eat there, to Madeline, which is known as Maya in the uh, in the film. She's there while her partner is out, and she starts playing a record and music, and, um, you know, of course, she starts to get taunted, the first to get taunted. So... That was very similar in the 2008 version. And also the idea of like how they both were killed is very similar. But I think at the very end is where it does get slightly different. Because again, it's like it feels like a remake but with a modern twist. And it's set up to be multiple films. And I, but take what I just said with a grain of salt. But they are definitely making more than one film. Um, when the second one comes out, you can anticipate it's going to be very different. And I'm actually more excited to see how that film pans out versus like this one. It was, it was interesting. It was good seeing the characters come to life. It was interesting, um, to see how they modernized it. Uh, if you like the franchise and you, you are very much like afraid and like home invasion horror films, I think you'll like this film overall. You'll enjoy seeing it modernized. You'll so... I think that in itself is what I would say with what I found. Now, this film scared me because I lived in a small town in 2008. My mom would work very late hours and I was home alone. And I remember my friend at the time who lived a couple of houses down from me, she was dealing with some mental health issues. And one of them was definitely experiencing stuff that she would see or hear things outside of her house. And that freaked me out. So I think when I saw this film, it just really hit close to home back in 2008. Currently, now watching it now and where I'm at in this day in my life uh, or in this stage of my life, like, yeah, it's freaky. I mean, I'm home alone right now filming this. <laughs> um, but overall, like, I think, like, it's – it's there's different precautions. Like, I think in the film, they definitely made some very silly decisions in the film. Like, I love the horror genre. I love campy stuff. But I'm also getting kind of tired of, like – like like the characters making very predictable things and i just saw tarot they uh, compared to tarot to this like at least the characters in this film made better decisions than the one in tarot because in tarot some of the characters just oh my god frustrating me i was like i'm gonna pull my hair out right now like this is just so bad decision making it is 2024 we should not be making these decisions um, which might I add, I will be doing an episode on that. So stay tuned for my thoughts on the movie Tarot. But anyway, so I think that's where I'm at with The Strangers and how it hit close to home. And I just think that like, you know, with me living here in my home in this day and stage, like we have security, phones, backups, like there's just so many things to do. And I feel like in general, like as an adult, I feel more in control than where I did when I was younger. And I think that kind of plays a reflection in terms of how I view home invasions and fear. And I think, again, like depends on how you feel, right? Like if you are a person that feels very secure in your home and you have all these plans and methods, then you're probably not going to find the film scary. Uh, but if you're somebody that is maybe going through a transition or changes or maybe you don't have control in your home environment – you might find this pretty spooky. Or if you are somebody that is going camping, you'll probably find this movie pretty spooky. So those are kind of like my thoughts in a nutshell regarding this film. But you can let me know as well, like what you think of home invasion films.
So now let's get into like an actual spooky story I recently read. Now I found this on ranker.com, but this story was actually found on the Let's Not Meet Reddit thread. Um, the Redditor is starring Void and he talks about a home invasion story. And I think I'm gonna read this on here because it is freaking scary. In my time, even since that film has aired, right? Other stories from people's experiences of their home invasions or uh, like that has freaked me out. There was somebody I knew back when I worked at a Jack in the Box and this girl, I was driving her home one day and, um, you know, she was telling me that in her apartment complex, they have these certain measures for safety and security because apparently someone that she knew very close, I think it was like a brother or cousin, I don't remember anymore, but she was telling me that the person literally climbed up the second story but through the balcony like they jumped on a balcony then climbed to the second story balcony and basically broke into this person's house that they knew by the way like um the person breaking in knew who lived there and actually was a close friend of the individual that lived there and this was around the holidays so he climbed through these balconies got into the house stole a tv the playstation like all of these things from his supposed friend you know he's and took off and at first they had no idea who could possibly break into the balcony and then they obviously found out who it was but it's just so sad because it just goes to show that sometimes like the people close to us can do one of the harshest and cruelest things to us um and so like literally on the eve before like christmas i think it was this person just broke in and stole everything and it all started because the individual invited friends over for a housewarming party and, you know, was showing them that they got like a new TV and a PlayStation, all this stuff. And one of the individuals there was like, you know what, I'm going to break into this person's house later down the road. And that's what happened. For me, it stirs up anger, you know. But now I'm going to read this other one where I'm like, what the heck? And then we're going to get into a paranormal story. So we have a few different ones today. All right, so this one is called A Person Hid in Their Own Attic While an Intruder Hunted Them Down. And the account is harrowing. So this is what they said. A few years ago, I was renting a house in Northern California. The neighborhood was just outside the suburbs. The area had no street lights, so it was very dark at night, especially if there were clouds blocking the moonlight. It didn't bother me though. It made me feel... It made my little house feel even more quaint on dark nights. I got home from work one day in midwinter. It was a cloudy night, so pulling up my house, I saw only what my headlights and front porch light illuminated. When I got out of the car, I caught a whiff of cigarette smoke, which was odd as I had never smelled that before around the house. I didn't see anyone nearby, so I ignored it and went inside. I had just got off a shift a few hours of overtime, so I felt pretty tired. And even though it wasn't 7 p.m. yet, I decided to take a shower and call it a night. I woke up some time later, sure that I had heard a noise inside my house. I wasn't worried right away because my friend would sometimes stop by to use my shower after work on his way to his night classes. I even gave him a spare key so he could stop by even if I wasn't home. He would always text me to let me know beforehand though, and I hadn't heard my phone go off. I reached over to my bedside table and picked up my cell phone to see if my friend had sent me a text message. The bright light from my phone's screen and number pad blinded me. These were the days before phones had a light sensor that would dim the screen in the dark. And this particular phone was so bright that I could even use it as a flashlight. Through squinted eyes, I could make out that it was 9 something, but I couldn't tell if I had an unread text message or not. I set my phone aside and called my friend's name. There were a couple of seconds of silence before I heard loud footfalls as someone started running through the bottom of my house. I left out of bed and ran to the closet. They were already up the stairs by the time I had opened the door and stepped inside. That house had three rooms upstairs, two bedrooms on either side of the hallway, the one I was in and a spare and a bathroom at the end. The bedroom doors were both closed, but the bathroom door was cracked open. I heard whoever was in my house thunder down the hallway past my door and into the bathroom. Thank God he did. That gave me enough time to open the attic access in the ceiling of my closet and hoist myself up. 
I had just started to lift myself up when the person ran back out of the bathroom. My feet were barely inside of the attic when my bedroom door burst open. I heard footsteps run into my room and stop. When they didn't see me in the room, they ran back in the hallway and into the other room which had boxes stacked in a corner and some ways and a table where I painted my miniature models. I guess they decided that if someone was hiding, it would be in that room because they charged back into my room and turned on the light. A moment later, the closet door was ripped open. I was crutched in my attic just a foot or so away from the access so I could try to stop them if they started to climb up. My vantage point, I, all I could see was their knee down. They were wearing dirty blue jeans with frayed cuffs and worn work boots. After a few seconds later of looking in the closet, they stepped away and I heard a loud crash come from my room, followed by a scream of frustration and anger. The scream was the most unnerving part of the incident for me. The man in my house ran back downstairs. I heard crashes and clatters as things were thrown around and furniture was knocked over. I stayed crouched in the attic. I had left my cell phone when I ran for the closet and I wasn't certain I could climb down without him hearing. After some time, the noises stopped. I started counting slowly when I reached a thousand. I decided it was safe enough to climb down and call the police. The first thing I noticed when I exited the closet was the intruder had flipped my bed over. I assumed in an attempt to find me. That was the loud noise I heard after he stepped away from the closet. I couldn't find my cell phone, so I went to the landline by the bed and called the police. I waited in my room until I heard them call out from downstairs. The first floor was a mess, but I had expected that. Chairs had been knocked over, the sofa had been flipped... All the books, pictures, and knickknacks I had on my shelves were strewn across the floor. The cupboards in the kitchen had been opened and all boxed and canned foods had been thrown to the ground. As far as I could tell, the only thing missing was a single knife out of the wooden block in my kitchen. The police checked the house from top to bottom and they found the side door had been forced open by something like a crowbar. They also found a few cigarette butts along my fence line with some foil and empty pen too, with the, which the police said people often use to smoke some other things, if you know what I mean. So they think he had been watching my house for a while. I realized that he must have been out there smoking a cigarette when I got home. They collected up the evidence and told me I should stay with friend, family or friends at night and get the door fixed as soon as possible. I opted to just not sleep. I moved a shelf over to block the broken door and spent the next couple hours cleaning things up. I would often go to the window with a flashlight and shine it along the fence line where the police found the cigarette butts and foil, but I didn't see anything. The next day, I called to have the door fixed and motion lights installed at the back and sides of my house. I ran a phone cable up into the attic and added a landline. I never wanted to be stuck up there without a phone again. Nothing else happened at that house, though. I lived there another three years without an incident. One more precaution I took was practicing getting out of bed, going to my closet, and climbing into the attic as quickly and quietly as possible. I even kept at it when I moved, except now I go to a crawl space at the back of the closet instead of the attic. I try not to think about what could have happened if I had been a bit slower getting to the attic, or if he hadn't gone into the bathroom at the end of the hall first. And so that's the end of that story. Uh, that is very spooky. I don't know if I could live out there like that. After an incident like that, I think I would be too traumatized. And the exchange of being that anxious and traumatized and paranoid is just not worth me staying there, in my humble opinion. But kudos for this person for taking precaution in their own means and being able to live there for three years after the fact. Would you be able to live in the same house had something like this happened to you, let me know. Now, I want to transition into now paranormal activity and home invasions. This is going to be more of a recap. I did do a whole episode on this on YouTube, and basically the episode is regarding... My video is titled, Emma Chamberlain's Scariest Night Psychic Medium Reacts. Emma Chamberlain talks about having one of the most scariest experiences in her life, in her home. Basically... What started off as her going to the bathroom and having a 
low stock of toilet paper resulted in her going to the garage and noticing that upon not being near the garage, she would hear these weird beeping sounds. Now, most of us with, you know, security and security accessories and equipment, you know that certain entrances of your home will make a ping sound if you are entering and exiting out of these entrances of your home. So she did have something like this set up for the garage, in the garage, And she started to hear the noise go off. She thought it was the wind, so she went to check on it. But shortly thereafter, she is obviously freaked herself out. She calls her mom and she decides that she wants to call the police because that is really weird. The idea that you had just gone to the garage, got, you know, did your thing and realized that it was going off, like that is pretty freaking weird. And so then, of course, she starts to notice that the equipment is not working and is offline. And so she starts to fear that. Maybe somebody might have cut the electricity or maybe somebody is in her home or something. Now, she definitely emphasized that this was not clickbait and this is like all this, you know, she really strongly wants to emphasize that she's telling the truth and she had like locked herself in and waited for the police to get there. But when they got there, they realized that like there was no signs of anybody on the property or trying to uh, get in her home. Um, and I know that she said that she had followed up with like a security person, electrician to come check out like the security that she had set up and see if there was any faults or glitches or anything like that, which they found nothing of the sort. So for her, she just feels like it's really weird. And then admits the fact that like there has been an energy of a boy in her home. When she moved into the home, they had, uh, I guess, her team who helped rebuild her home or remodel the home had hired somebody to do a cleansing. And, you know, it's interesting because she, towards the end, she admits that she feels like there is a little boy there that was playing tricks on her. I definitely sympathize with that because I feel like, yes, home invasions are scary as you just heard the story. Like, that freaks me out. I think that even the idea that you're living alone and your security is offline and you hear a beeping sound coming through the entrance of your home, like, that's really scary. I think that, like, paranormal phenomenon can be just as scary for some people in situations like that. My mother, um, when I went off to college and then moved to Denver, uh, she lived in the home by herself. And she told me that there was a lot of weird experiences in the home from, uh, like, hearing somebody walking up the stairs and the stairs were very creaky might I add and she saw a white shadow man just stare at her and then walk back down the stairs and since then she has refused to ever sleep with the lights off and even like now that she lives with me she does have like these night lights and low lights just she just cannot be in complete darkness like that has scared her dramatically So it's interesting that like in general, right, like the reality is, is that your home is supposed to be one of the most safest places, a place where you can unwind and be vulnerable and be yourself and be in the comfort of your home without any judgment. And to have the idea of anything there, well, that's just very scary. And I am so thankful that I, you know, I've never had experienced any of those things. Like, yes, I've had weird experiences on my own. But that is just scary. I'm going to knock on wood because heck no, no way. Um, I think I've kind of rambled on a little too long. But I do want to say that if you want me to continue this conversation of home invasions on the scope of like abductions, alien abductions, encrypted talk, please let me know. I do have a Discord channel that I want you guys to join if you can. Uh, I will plug it in on there. Or if you want to write to me, feel free to do so. Share your spooky story at gmail.com. But I would love for you guys to join me over on Discord and continue these conversations so we can definitely have uh, a lot of things to talk about via the podcast. I'm already getting myself too spooked out already here home alone and recording and talking about these topics. And I hope to see you guys next time. And remember to stay strange.